Hey, Patrick. Morning, Bogdan. Ask if I'm in dark too. Ah, hi, George. Hello. Hi. Hey, George. Uh, let's let's give it a minute and minute or two. See if uh, anybody else uh, gonna connect. Uh, I think Dinesh was considering, or perhaps we'll see a Rafa here. So let's wait a bit. Where would they get this link, though? I don't see it in that wiki page. Uh, well, from Discord or uh, from RSVCX repo. And actually, it's also on the uh, wiki page, but maybe it should be a bit more visible. There is a, on a some like top level page, there's a link to the calendar. And in a calendar, there's a link to the, the Zoom call. So. Yeah, maybe we should make it a bit easier when, when a person looks at the wiki. Hi, Rafael. Yeah, hey. Hello. Uh, Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm happy to join for the first time. Yeah, it's great to have you. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's wait just a minute or two more, uh, see if anybody else is going to join. Though I suspect that for for Dinesh, who said he was he was considering to join, uh, is as far as I know in Canada, so might be too early for him. I guess at at uh, nine a.m. UTC, it's the middle of the night or early early morning. Perhaps we can kick it off and all right. Let's see join us later. Yeah. Okay. So can you see my screen? Yep. So once again, um, welcome everybody to uh, next Aries BCX community call. It's 16 February 2023, and this is our antitrust policy notice we have to go through for hyperledger policy. So you can take a you can take a look. I'm not gonna read it out loud. <laughs> All right. So let's get into our agenda. So yeah, today today is a, uh, we have a, a Rafael for the first time. Uh, usually, Rafael, when when somebody new comes, we we ask for like a brief introduction, if you wouldn't mind, just to you know briefly tell us like what are you doing with VCX and perhaps what what company you work for, just something like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. So my name is Raphael. Uh, I'm living in Switzerland and I work for the uh, uh, Swiss federal government. And uh, yeah, we just have started a few months ago a big project to digitalize the, yeah, the identity here in Switzerland. And um, for that, we plan to work with uh, RIS uh, technologies. And uh, because we, of course, we will uh, have an iOS and an Android application, we plan to use uh, VCX as a framework to, to, to use iOS. And uh, yeah, that's how we have started. And uh, we just made the first proof of concept, I think, uh, this month, yeah, or last month. And, um, and yeah, I'm really, I'm really interested to, to join you and to, to see what will be the future, especially the deprecation of the LibVCX, but also the new uh, uh, Unify uh, uh, topic. Um, because yeah, for what I have 
uh, we did in the past year, in the past, in the previous uh, days, it makes totally sense. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to for that. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, maybe, maybe just out of curiosity, uh, if if you are able to respond, is is there a reason like why you why you went for VCX you know, uh, and instead of going like a native? I, I guess I guess the value proposition for you is that that you can build native application instead of like having it wrap in uh, like um, what they call it uh, React Native or yeah you know? yeah exactly yeah we in fact we we made the first pilot with React Native uh, last year. Mm -hmm. um, and now we want to go with a, with a native application here. Yeah. Ah, I see. Awesome, awesome. All right, thank you so much. Uh, so let's let's get into uh, into the agenda. So uh, yeah, before we start, uh, let me just ask if uh, if you would like to anyone add anything, any point additional to the agenda. Perhaps I know about you, George. I think you wanted to perhaps discuss the stuff around the edX course and. Uh, the F uni ffi uh, through our private chat yeah yeah that was something i wanted to talk about um but yeah i could see you have that in there at the end that's good all right so so that would cover probably like also the uh the stuff around the uni ffi then right uh, uh, somewhat yeah yeah that'd be good okay possible. i'll just uh maybe uh am i not logged in here oh yeah there we go so uh, but by the way, um, just a note for anyone again, uh, you can always feel free to add anything to the agenda ahead of the meeting. You just need to log into the Hyperledger page and then you can edit. It's a wiki, so it's it's free to edit. Uh, okay, so if there's nothing else, then um, then I guess we have our agenda complete. Uh, so let's start with our recent overview of the recent work done. So that will be fairly quick as these things has been discussed before in a great depth. So we had this uh, huge um, uh, gigantic effort merge. <clears throat> uh, props to uh, Bogdan for pulling this off. Uh, it was the new re-implementation of the connection state machine without uh, without mediation. And this has, been, this has been merged after three weeks, uh, roughly just a few days ago, two days ago. Uh, so yeah, feel free to try it out and uh, I'm be definitely curious any any feedbacks. Uh, um, and next up, there was uh, a minor CI update, uh, but this is uh, uh, this was relevant mostly to Node.js. So there was some uh, there was some uh, minor testing issues is uh, uh, probably default version of npm has changed in in uh, CI and that have caused some issues. So uh, the solution was to just downgrade the npm temporarily and later on we can figure out how to actually do the upgrades to npm npm nine nine dot x. Uh, now getting to uh, more exciting stuff. Uh, so what's going on right now? Uh, we have uh, another huge uh, rewrite um, being done by Bogdan, uh, and there's an open pull request for for this. So um, it's it's still uh, I guess a midway, uh, but I'll, I, I'll I'll leave um, Bogdan space to uh, tell us a bit bit a bit more about it. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for for the intro, Patrick. So essentially, um, uh, I'll, I'll stop sharing so we can perhaps you know uh, navigate at your will if you want to show something. Uh, sure. I don't have the PR up. I think, or actually, I just might. Okay. Cool. Let's uh, let me bring uh, this up. And just uh, share my screen just a uh, just a tip. Uh, make sure you know before you turn on this screen that you don't have some sort of you know private. Yeah, stuff. don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Um, I guess this would be it. Okay. Is this uh, is this visible? Mm, yeah. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, just as a short intro of the, the rationale behind this. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, on, on one hand, there are like a lot of improvements that can be done to how messages are handled and what they expose and how they work. Um, and probably one of the biggest aspects of this would be the deserialization, like the conditional deserialization, the conditional deserialization of messages based on their type. Uh, because that's what basically determines what you what message you end up with. Um, then there are some traits that I like to introduce for like various I know common behavior between messages, like messages containing the thread decorator and stuff like that. Um, but one big um, I would say an improvement slash feature to this, because this would be sort of a new feature would be um, the introduction of handling SEMVR uh, in a consistent manner. So right now, the messages are pretty much designed for like version one of protocols and like version 1.0 of protocols, actually, uh, of the ones that we support. But there are efforts into creating a new, some new versions already appeared. Like there's the issuer protocol uh, 2.0, I believe. Um, and I think also proof request 2.0. So there are advancements being done in these protocols and the SEMVR RFC, there's a, an RFC describing how this should be handled. Um, and we basically don't have any anything of that sort, right? So right now there aren't really any other minor versions that we should be concerned about, but um, you know, some some could be added, and we should and we could be prepared and should be prepared to handle that. Essentially, the the overall idea is that if your agent supports, I don't know, let's say the connection protocol up to uh, one point three, this major version one and minor version three, and there's one point five out in the wild, and you get the message like that, you should fall back to one point three and respond accordingly. Um, so that's the overall idea. And yeah, basically not to interfere with the like the current messages because this is ongoing and there's going to be a lot of work that needs to be done before this is uh, somewhat finished um, and could be merged into Aries VCX. So there will be some, I created just a new crate for now so that I don't get a lot of compile errors by simply refactoring the entire thing directly. Um, yeah, and that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, maybe if you guys want a short uh, introduction into how this works uh, and maybe the ideas that um, are exposed here, let me share my screen again. Um, and there are actually a couple of things that are, let's say up for debate. Um, and I guess it would be a good idea to bring them up here. Can you see my screen? Yep. OK, cool. All right, so right now the messages are pretty much just stubs. So there's not nothing really implemented in them. Um, because essentially, the, the most complex and important part, and that's actually done. So that's, that's a good thing. The most complex part was basically the deserialization, like the conditional deserialization and like resorting to the what I call a concrete message. So I don't know, a basic message or in a connection, you have an invitation, a request, a response, right? These are just dummies right now, and that's fine. They will get populated later. Um, but yeah, essentially, um, the, the idea is to have this message type um, that helps us with deserialization. And Basically, um, I, I don't really want to start with a to a message because there's a bit of debate that I want to bring up there. But essentially, let's say you get a message, you have a type field, and you, this is basically used to deserialize that type field into a concrete um, or like, yeah, a concrete, um, let's say, I don't know, indication of what message the rest of the JSON contents um, are, are linked to, right? So what you're gonna get out of the rest of the fields. So essentially we basically deserialize this and this contains an enum 
which is pretty much the protocol supported and these are segregated into versions and then like major versions and the minor versions and so on. And then these are basically just um, structures containing the, like enums containing, containing the, um, let's say string representation of the, you know, actual uh, message kind. So for routing, there's only forward, but if we look at connection, there is, there are a couple of uh, message kinds that you can get. Um, these are for version 1.0. So a new version might have different naming or different, uh, I don't know, maybe multiple fields or, or stuff like that. And this is why we have this segregation, at least in terms of types. Um, we'll see that this is not public exposed. So, I mean, it's pub here, but this will not be user facing API. So someone using the messages great will not care about this. This will be internal and used for purely deserialization and serialization of messages. Um, so the, the, the complexity of this is not necessarily something that users will have to um, you know, consider when, when using the messages crate. Um, yeah, as a, maybe as a side note there, the namings are still pretty bad and I'm aware of it. And also the, like the, the crate structure is still pretty bad. This is like, still ongoing. It's actually fairly early in development. So, um, a lot of things will change in both of those, both of these regards, but yeah, so essentially there's this concretization of what a message will end up, like the, what the type really uh, gets to be. And there are some traits implemented, badly named, but I know, um, with some constants and, and stuff like that. And essentially um, the deserialization happens of, of the message type um, happens by deserializing to a string because that's what it is. And then there's a from string implementation for message type, and it does the following thing. It takes the prefix and then splits the, like the remaining or the, the overall uh, string up to a certain point and then parses the parts, you know, the family or the protocol, the version and the final message kind, and then parses the major and minor versions, like uh, parts of the version and builds up a message family from that. Um, and then this results in, in a message type. Uh, the prefix is there because we need to support like both the old prefix and the new one. Um, basically the, the old behavior or the, the current behavior of the current messages crate and the, uh, let's say this new crate that I'm working on is the same. So we accept both of these, but we're only gonna send out uh, the didcom prefix uh, for types. Um, so yeah, there's, there is a lot of intricacies here and um, feel free to review the, the pull request and even ask questions. Or if you see something that could be done better, I'm more than willing to, I'm more than open to suggestions. Um, and yeah, that's for the type. And now getting to, let's say the debate of how this works. Um, so we're gonna have basically just an enum of the A2A message. Uh, and this would be split on protocols or message families similar to how the message family part of the message type works. And now these right now, because I'm firstly, I'm trying to replicate what the current messages crate does. So there's only like version 1.0 or version 1.1 for out of band. Um, so there are no, there aren't enums or stuff like that here because there's really no need for this. And this would be user facing API. And I guess the rationale behind that is we can like proactively create these enums and segregate the messages by versions as well, but that would be user facing API and users would have to constantly keep, uh, you know, matching on the enum or parsing it to say, okay, this is version one, version 1.0, whatever, whatever. And maybe the routing protocol will never get another version. You know, maybe there's always just gonna be version 1.0. It's the perfect protocol, it needs no improvement. I don't know. So these kind of changes will be done um, as they come and as the need arises. Um, so for instance, right now for the, maybe not a connection protocol, but the credential issuance protocol, which is version 1.0 that's being used in the current messages crate, there's version 2.0 
out there. So this will get a bit adjusted later on and Nina will be introduced here, uh, segregating the version one from version two or the major version one from major version two. Um, yeah, and essentially we can talk a bit about the deserialization of this and serialization of this. Uh, and this is where the, um, I guess the debate comes from. So generally when you use CERDA to serialize and deserialize something, you take advantage of CERDA derive and derive the serialized and deserialized traits on your types. Um, and that does a lot of things under the hood. Um, and essentially the way it does it is that CERDA built a lot of stuff um, like a lot of visitors or deserializers and serializers that are somehow like somewhat private, but they're all public because they need to be available in your code, right? Um, but they don't really advise to, again, they don't really advise you to use that directly because it's, you know, sort of like private content that it can change. And essentially when you use the macros or the derive attributes, um, like the the code gets re uh, recompiled right and regenerated um but for our use cases and because these message types are somewhat intricate um and they're not like i don't know just simple fields you know as you would see maybe in one of these um one of these like uh, message versions um we kind of need to parse this um, in a way. And so we're kind of taking advantage of some of some things that certainly has marked as private. Um, and there are a lot of comments of what these do and the, even my opinion on this, uh, it's quite thoroughly described here and why I think this is okay. Um, Shortly, I think it's okay because we're not dealing with a lot of internal stuff and even the inner workings of these exposed types. This is basically just a, a bit of a refactored um, deserialized implementation of what you would get from simply deriving deserialized. But in a general, like in a generic um, tagged, internally tagged enum, you would get, certainly would create a field struct or a field enum here that represents any of these variants and then create a visitor for that and then basically pass the, the type to this tagged content visitor, which essentially just, as it deserializes your, your input, it looks for that tag, um, which in our case is the, is the type and stores that separately and then caches the rest of the contents to be deserialized later into the concrete type. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We just use this internal type of survey to uh, basically get the tag and store everything else. Uh, we deserialize the tag to our message type. And then this is the content deserializer because that's how the, that's how the tagged content visitor stores the rest, the remaining, um, input tree as a content, as an internal content struct. Um, and then essentially this delayed deserialize is just, um, is just about not having a 100 line match here because you essentially have to look at the, if our tag is a message type, we have to look at the family, right? And basically see, okay, what, protocol this is, what my major version, what minor version, and what message kind, and then deserialize into that. And this is what we're doing here. This is exactly what this is. It's just that it's segregated from, you know, as on level so that you first determine the message family. And then when you have the message family, you determine the major version and so on. In this case, it's, it doesn't go that far because it doesn't need to, because we only treat version 1.0 here, but that's what it would be doing. Um, and that's for deserialization. There are some alternatives here. Um, I'm not necessarily going to discuss them right now. I documented them here and why I think they're worse. If you guys want, maybe after I finish talking, you can, you can ask me on the one of time we can discuss more. So that's for serialization and for deserialization, sorry. And I'm just going to say that in case of a breaking change, I don't know, this gets moved, it's no longer present here, or it's renamed or something like that. It's really easy to fix this. Um, and also we use like, um, 
concrete versions of survey so it's not like our code is not gonna like suddenly not gonna work tomorrow maybe it will not work if we bump the version and something changes and then we can fix it but nothing will just stop working out of the blue so i guess that's another important aspect serialization works in a similar fashion um but it uses a different component it uses this flat map serializer and this is basically um correspondent to when you have a structure and you want to flatten the internal like a different structure that you that is a field in your parent struct um, so essentially because when we serialize we have a concrete message but it doesn't have the type and the type needs to be adjacent to the the message the serialized message so this is what we do here uh, the only internal part is this flat map serializer which will basically do uh, precisely this, um, let me pull that up here. So it will, like based on our message, we can determine the message type, like the concrete message, we can determine the message type, it's part of the infrastructure. And then we serialize that as the type field. And then we serialize, we generate the serializer here and I'm gonna explain why, but then we serialize the rest of the structure and that's it. And you end up with your message. So the reason we have to generate this here through closure is because, I mean, there are a couple of, of reasons altogether, but the main one is how the machinery works because you generate the state, because this is how you serialize a structure in survey. Um, you basically serialize it as a map where the fields are keys and the values are well, values. Um, so we generate the state here, this is public. And then we pass this around and then we end the serialization and we end up with our, I don't know, the serialized format. So because we need a mutable reference here, like in these two places to serialize the first entry, which is a message type. And then we have to pass the mutable reference to the serializer that does the rest of the job. We kind of have to postpone the creation of the serializer here. And this is just a new type structure. So it's fine. Like, it implicitly has a closure uh, created out of it. So we just pass that around. And yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, this is how it works. And there are some tests here. I actually even ran them before. So right now, the, the messages themselves, like content of the message is not important. It's just gibberish. But the important part is this, like you get the type, which is adjacent, and then you deserialize the rest uh, of the message as a concrete message type. And that's the overall idea. Another thing about the, um, like the semantic versioning and the fact that we will support it uh, and accommodate it is that we can also this way sort of um, determine that compile time through some feature flags. Because right now everything will just be exposed, right? We're not gonna have any conditional compilation, but down the line, we can definitely implement that. And let's say you can choose whether you want a certain minor version of a protocol or a certain major version or a certain protocol altogether. And based on that, we, could, we can build a compile time map of the, the protocols and their versions that are supported. So when we use the discover features protocol where a different agent queries us for, um, for the protocols and the versions that we support, we already have that like compile time determined and that would be pretty cool because there's no, you know, there's no way to go wrong with it. And the entries in the map would also be like conditionally compiled. So um, that's how we would we would control it. And yeah, that's uh, that's I guess the overall idea. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done, um, and there's some boilerplate going around, which I might turn into some macros. Uh, I'm thinking about taking these and moving them with the protocols themselves, which is probably gonna be much easier to track instead of having these larger folders. Um, yeah, so I might move things around. Certain things definitely deserve some um, better naming like these resolve traits, um, but that's the overall, the overall idea. And right now the remaining parts is like what I just said right now and also implementing the concrete messages like with the proper fields and so and such, and that's, uh, that's it. Any opinions, comments?
Looks really cool. I think I'd need to <laughs> sit down and read through all your comments to properly understand it all. <laughs> yeah, I know. So it does take some some time to to go through it and maybe to like mentally map what's going on. Uh, obviously, I, we don't want to sit here for three hours while I talk about it. Uh, so feel free to go over the PR and you know at your own pace. And again, feel free to ask questions either in the PR or even on Discord. Um, and also, again, if you have an idea or anything like that, feel free to um, to ask and or to, to propose it. But uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate all the documentation you've been doing on your recent PRs. It'll make it much easier to understand. Yeah, no, I know. I love documentation. So <laughs> I <laughs> it, it, like it's 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 also for you guys but honestly i think primarily i do it for myself because in two months from now i will have no recollection of what i did here i'm obviously <laughs> joking but it will take me a lot of time to figure out what i do what i did and why i did it so again yeah, the, exactly. the documentation is also for me um but uh but yeah and we could definitely use more of that especially i know maybe for for newcomers or people that are just uh, tuning in or new users of, of our crates um it's probably going to make a lot more sense to actually like as you're going through the code and reviewing it and understanding it some comments here and there would definitely make a difference in terms of how fast you understand what's going on so yeah yeah, yeah definitely I, I think we'll have a chance to do that if we're type stating all the handlers mm -hmm. yeah yeah definitely maybe just like very minor comment from me uh about naming uh i would suggest to kind of change the naming as we used to use eight way message uh, i think this was actually created in the times where aries didn't actually exist at all so maybe we can rename it to aries message i think that would make make sense uh yeah i don't know again i i don't think it's uh i mean if you if you guys want to debate stuff like that here we can, but I think it would be best to debate like naming and stuff like that in the PR itself. Uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know. And I don't really care what this gets named to. Uh, I guess Aries message is a, is a better name. So yeah, I, just, I don't have a problem. It's just a small comment that. which came to my mind now. So I just yeah, no, no, one, good one more thing is like uh, you, you, were, you were thinking of moving message uh, type uh, under the protocols. I would actually suggest to keep it as it is because there's already like like the message type itself, the, the parsing and the serialization, the stuff around it, like it already has like quite a bit of complexity to it. So I think if it's merged together with the protocols, it might be kind of... Uh, yeah, kinda no, too I see what you mean uh, and I would agree, but if I can get this narrowed down to like a couple of macro invocations or stuff like that, I think it would be... Uh, much easier because then you would you would might end up with like I don't know ten lines of of code in each of these files mm -hmm. and it's probably going to be a bit more um, that's that's my opinion but it probably would be a bit more um, I don't know it would make it a bit more easier to understand that I don't know, this corresponds to this right if they are together so like the the concrete message type corresponds to where I don't know <laughs> the, the message type like the variant of the message type corresponds to the actual message implementation with its fields right again provided that we provided that we have this um, you know narrow down to a couple of lines I don't know uh, but again this is also up for debate yeah. If you guys, think it would be much easier to or more comprehensive to have it separate. That's also it's also cool. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. All right. Let, let's let's keep this. I don't want to like uh, pollute it too much with like small details. Um, we still have some time, uh, some stuff on on the agenda. So, yeah. Th thank you. Thank you very much, Bogdan, for the presentation. Yeah. I think it was. Uh, I think it's, it's a good introduction. It's a big. Uh, like we don't usually review like every single pull request on the on these calls, but um, since uh, this is kind of a big one and it's like big rewrite essentially, uh, or refactors from scratch, 
um, if you will. Um, I think it 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 deserves some some space here to to actually tell people like what is this about? Why are we rewriting it? Uh, yeah, so so thank you. And uh, I just noticed uh, we have a we have a, 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 new, a new joiner here, Innocent Grades. Well, welcome uh, to the call. Um, you can you can stay silent if you will, or you can introduce yourself if you would like to. Uh, so I'll just give you a bit of a uh, time, and you can decide. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh... So for being a little bit late, uh, my name is Innocent Grits. I'm based in Zimbabwe. Um, I'm a software developer just getting into blockchain. Um, and I came across uh, Aris JavaScript and it was interesting. Uh, so when I saw this on the meetup, um, I was interested to know exactly how you guys are doing it as a community. So. I am basically here to learn and maybe later on I'll also contribute to the community. Awesome, awesome. Uh, just maybe a technical note here, uh, ju just to make sure you are actually where you are, you, where you are looking to be at. Uh, so, so we, Aries JavaScript framework, if that's what you're looking for, or if that's what you're interested in, that's actually a, a, a different group and they have their own old meet meetings as well uh yeah and this particular meeting is uh, is a uh, rust implementation of aries protocols whereas although we have actually javascript wrappers around uh you know for our project and you can consume us uh from javascript uh it's a it's a nat uh, this project this aries vcx is uh, a native rust implementation so, but but there is a like a, a JavaScript implementation of um, Aries as well. So you might take a look at both, and uh, you know if you decide to stick with us, we'll be happy. But uh, just so you know, you have a, just to make sure that you have all of the information. Yeah, yeah, I noticed. Yeah, I'm already familiar with JavaScript with Aries JavaScript, mm -hmm. um, but I, I had no idea that there was also a, a a Rust native that was going on. So when I saw that this is based on Rust. That's what actually excited me to see how it's been oh, done nice. in Rust. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's great to hear. So yeah, happy to have you here. Uh, welcome on board. Uh, we have these All meetings, right. uh, just to give you some information I, I said in the beginning, we have these meetings uh, every, every, um, every week, 9 a.m. UTC at this time. And uh, there's a there's a wiki page on Hyperledger Foundation. So if there will be you know in the future, if you would like to join next meetings uh, and you would like to like discuss particular uh, topic, uh, whether it's like a questions you have or I don't know any issue or discussion point, you can you can uh, you can log into the this Hyperledger Foundation wiki. You need to create account. Um, and then you can just edit this page, you know, at your will, you can add points here or, um, uh, yeah, it's a wiki. So it's, it's free to edit. That would be great. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. So let's, uh, let's continue our agenda. So we, uh, re uh reviewed the, the messages create and actually for upcoming work, uh, it's kind of empty. Uh, doesn't mean that we have no work. It just... I guess uh, we are already busy with uh, the currently the message is great and uh, and then some of the uh, some of the other stuff uh, is also ongoing, but I don't think we are gonna be taking any sort of new items uh, right now or like maybe not any significant new items right now. So I guess I'll just keep this empty. Uh, lots of stuff is already going on. And uh, and now coming to the like um, the discussion before the end of the meeting after after our uh, work review, so there's there's two points here. Uh, one is uh, from from kind of my uh, uh, initiative this repo restructuring, and that relates to the deprecation of uh, the libvcx uh, components. Uh, oh, I'm not sharing my screen, so let me do that. I, I thought I did, so I was like pointing on my screen, uh, trying to make sense, and I realized you don't see anything. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so so these two points, uh, and yeah, I would like to just uh, talk a little bit about this. 
Uh, so, uh, as as we as we have mentioned before, and we also mentioned on 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 previous meetings on a Discord, like uh, we are going to deprecate the libcx component of the repository, uh, but there's a it's it's a bit more nuanced than that because the libcx itself and the way it's structured, it actually has two main uh, modules in it. So there's APIC and there's API VCX. Uh, maybe it'll be easier if I actually open up a diagram, which we have somewhere. Um, let me see, where can I find this? Ah, uh, probably in libvcx. Uh, yeah, so this this is this will be easy uh, to understand. So uh, this we have this uh, libvcx uh, component, which has kind of two parts. Uh, one is the kind of the core component of it is called API VCX. Um, and then on top of that, uh, there's another component, APIC. And on APIC are built, uh, is built a libvcx Java wrapper and libvcx iOS wrapper. So the deprecation plan is to deprecate uh, this uh, part here. So uh, Java wrapper, iOS wrapper and APIC. Uh, as uh, as there are better approaches uh, nowadays, how to actually build FFI wrappers uh, for for mobile for uh, iOS and Java, um, and that's uh, that's something we've been discussing on our previous meeting. So again, uh, anyone interested in the particular topic of like how to build better. Uh, FFI wrappers. We covered that extensively on our previous meeting on 9th February. There is a video recordings for every meeting we have, so you can like, take a look at that. Um, but yeah, in a nutshell, like uh, th this takes a lot of maintenance. It's a very old approach uh, how to do FFI, and uh, we don't have like capacity um, to to further support this, especially with the the new kind of the the plans to like implement new protocols uh you know we are doing a lot of internal refactoring now to kind of uh propagate these improvements and you know add new features in the future to java and as wrapper it will take lots of effort and um and honestly uh, they are getting kind of outdated in terms of dependencies and yeah just overall approach so instead, what we'll be keeping um, from the libvcx crate is the API VCX. Uh, we'll still keep maintaining that. I know Dinesh on Discord um, is building Flutter wrapper on top of API VCX. So there uh, should be any worries about that. Um, we also do uh, plan to keep maintaining Node.js wrapper. Uh, but yeah, for the mobile approaches, uh, we want this part and have it replaced with uh, uh, the you uh, new approach based on uni FFI, which is right now uh, in like POC stage. Uh, and yeah, and what I was actually also wanted to point out here uh, to make this whole deprecation and uh, what is deprecated and what is not kind of clear. Um, I created issue to actually separate, split out the libvcx crate into two components. So one would be the API C kind of uh, crate and the other will be API VCX. That way we could kind of more clearly uh, communicate like, okay, the, this crate is fully deprecated and this one is still supported. Don't use this one, but you can use the other one. Now it's kind of, uh, it could be kind of confusing like, oh, we are deprecating half of this crate. So I think splitting and splitting it out into uh, would make things uh, clearer. Uh, yeah, and that that's kind of it. Uh, do you guys anyone have any comments, ideas, insights on on this restructuring and also the deprecation itself? Um, I do have a question. So the like the current libvcx part, the API vcx. Uh, part of libvcx is that only going to be used for the Node.js wrapper yes. in the future? Yes. Uh, well, for uh, it will be used for Node.js wrapper, and as I mentioned, uh, Dinesh 
uh, oh, actually on this yeah, the building flutter wrapper on top of this. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, because I was thinking about integrating that directly into the wrapper, the Node.js wrapper, but I I forgot that uh, there's also the, the flutter wrapper being built. Hmm. My bad. All right. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, do you confirm that we will continue to do bug fix of the v6 at least until we have a stable version one of the unify library? Yeah, I think uh, I think we can do hot fi like uh, fixes if there's anything to fix. I think we can do that. It wouldn't be much of an effort, but uh, probably can't expect like new features. Uh, you know, to be to be propagated. If there's going to be new features uh, or new implementations uh, in Aries VCX, this these won't be won't be propagated to the Java and iOS, you know, the VCX wrappers. Yes, sure, makes sense. Thank you. Um, just on what was said uh, just before uh, the the Node.js wrapper. Um, did you guys originally try to write it on top of Aries VCX and ran into issues or? No, um... no the Node.js wrapper is also a very old component. Um, and it was always, well, actually, you know, originally the way the libvcx looked like, there was only one crate. It was Aries VCX and libvcx just all together intertwined. And then we started to kind of cutting it out into components. So then we iterated like we this was the final iteration when we actually split it out, you know, API VCX layer and API C layer. And and a Node.js wrapper existed for a long time. It was just kind of built the way it is. It just uh yeah, we started cutting it out. So probably if you if you are building a yeah, Node.js wrapper today from scratch, there also will be better approaches. Probably you could avoid this uh the, the approach with the U32 handles, um, but it just kind of ingrained there already. So uh, mm -hmm. we, we didn't try to, you know, uh, just rewrite it completely from scratch. It will be more challenging. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, uh, so there's no further questions. I think we can move on to the next point. Uh, and that's, uh, we had a recently in inquiry from Stephen Curran. Uh, he's a creator, or I don't know, maybe one of the creators uh, of edX course, which talks a lot about Aries um, and like Hype Ledger. And, and he, he posted a message on the Discord channel that he would like to include uh, or like include Aries VCX uh, implementation as kind of like uh, um, some included into the edX course he's building to point people like if you would like to, I guess, uh, uh, take a look at the Rust implementation. Uh, this is this is where you can start, you know, start. So, and, and there's uh, two kind of, I guess, PC pieces here. Uh, one is that we still have to create some sort of getting started page. And and uh, so far we uh, agreed that, uh, um, I think we, well, I'm not sure if we discussed this uh, on, a, on a actually call last week, but at least on Discord or like per private conversations I had, uh, it seems like the consensus is consensus is that the main sort of uh, uh, place where which you would sort of you know advert advertise or promote on this uh, edX course, what we would try to show people is the Aries VCX portion of the entire repository. So not to send them to the VCX or elsewhere, like just make uh, Aries VCX Rust implementation as a first class citizen. And then additionally to that, uh, there's lots of people interested in mobile implementation when it comes to Rust. Uh, but si since uh, due to the deprecation 
of the libvc it's, it's, it's old approach it wouldn't make sense to send people uh, uh, new people to uh, send them towards libvc anymore uh so instead you would um kind of point them to the uni ffi um poc implementation or like for now for now it's poc and then um yeah, even though it's very in a very early stage, um, um, I believe that if there's people out there who wants to build native, um, they might be open to actually work on this uh, implementation and perhaps, perhaps have some com contributions and help us out with uh, building that. Uh, so that's kind of, I guess, intro for, or like thoughts from my side, but uh, I'm curious to hear uh what you what's your what's your thoughts um so just for my understanding so the goal is for us to have uh some markdown file or files of a getting started guide and the main focus of it will be rust consumers so consumers of aries vcx crate um and then there's another section for mobile users um where we'll point them at the proof of concept, the unified proof of concept. Yeah, I think something like that. Okay, cool, cool. Um, if, if no one has other questions, um, my, my sort of big question is what that proof of concept uh, should really look like and also, when are we trying to have it finished already by? So I think we don't need to have it like finished. You know, the, the course, as I know, the course starts on 23rd of this month. Uh, I think we don't need to have the proof of concept like finished, even if there's just like a connection, you know, even if, if it is just what it is today, just kind of template for a, some, you know, some approach how to do the uni FFI. I mean, you demo the application. And, and it works. Maybe the implementation in the POC is not yet ideal. Uh, I can't really judge. It's, I'm not personally familiar with Unify. I never tried it, but but it works. And so it's something I guess we can iterate on. And and even though it's like large and complete, it's it's a place for. I, I think it's a good starting point for. Uh, interested parties to have a further contributions or yeah 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 true um i yeah i think i think my main thing with the current sample app uh that i showed last week is that um you know it, it it's just wrapping connection at the moment uh and all it really can let you do is you know create the initial in invitation or accept an invitation um, but I guess a proper sample app to actually walk through the connection protocol you'd have to you know put in a QR code scanner and have all these things running you know a mediator running uh, and mm -hmm. all this other stuff for a proper sample app um, that I think would interest external consumers just because the sample app at the moment uh, it it might be cool to us because you know we understand that um if you can call you know dot pairwise info and get back the data it means that it is working mm. um but i think more interesting to the consumer is being able to walk through a protocol if you get what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. i think uh i think the I, I guess to get a connection to get that kind of flow, like the main challenge would be to figure out the mediation actually, uh, actually. and um, but uh, yeah, so I guess that that's the question. At the same time, I uh, I equally wouldn't want to further promote the mediated connection, which is uh, coupled with the V6 agency node as a custom implementation. Uh, hmm. Or maybe, maybe we can like actually use. Maybe we could actually use it for the demo, uh, but not you. But without actually using the mediated connection implementation, which exists in Aries VCX, 
but uh, just kind of, you know, wire it up together on the wrapper layer. So uh, the wrapper would separately deal with the Aries VCX and would separately call the agency client for VCX agency node. That way, the right. related connection Aries VCX wouldn't be used, but still we could have like a cool demo which would actually work. Right, right. So you're talking about uh, having the agency client in the wrapper layer so that you can fetch messages and then, you know, inject them into your... Yeah, into connection. the connection. And uh, then there will be a demo, like a, a demo level implementation. Then I guess if if somebody would like to, they could use, you know, the VCX agency node for mediation if they don't mind that uh, uh, it doesn't necessarily uh, speaks like the pickup protocol to download the messages. Uh, or if somebody would like to, they could use different mediator. It, it would be like, you know, the, the implementation side weights from Aries VCX. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, also, another note, uh, I wasn't sure if I made it uh, clear in the past, but Unify, I don't believe, generates Java wrappers, uh, uh, only yeah. Kotlin. I see. I see. So, it, so it um, it generates just the bindings, but not the, not like a classes or something like that. Uh, it, it like it generates um, you know, code that Android consumers can use, all the classes and everything. But it's in Kotlin, um, so I don't think a Java Android consumer could. Oh, okay. Use those bindings. Ah, so so it only generates Kotlin. And iOS. Yeah, and on iOS, uh, it only generates Swift uh, bindings. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure about Objective C, or oh, I'm not sure okay. about much of iOS development, to be honest. I see. I, I didn't realize that. Uh, anyway, I I think that that's perfectly fine. Uh, I mean, uh, now we have only Kotlin Swift. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm not sure of the state kind of of mobile development. Uh, is that the case? That uh, so, so, Rafael, for you, you say that it's okay to do Swift and Kotlin? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, most of the of the uh, of the Android and iOS uh, application are currently uh, migrated to Kotlin and uh, Swift. It's compatible. It's retro compatible with everything made in Java and Objective C, and I think that. Every new mobile project now will be on on in Kotlin and Swift for sure. So right, right. I don't. There is it's it's, a, it's not a problem. I think. I, I, yeah. yeah, that's that's good to good to know. Uh, so what you're yeah. saying is that uh, Objective C is not used that much anymore. For it's iOS. used for legacy reason, but uh, uh -huh. everything new is, uh, is is made in Swift now, and I think it's the same for Android. Hmm. So I guess. Uh, the, the demo kind of you built on uh, on the v6 now that's on object that we generate objective c as i as i remember it's correct yes but uh, we can easily make a, like a, a, a bridge for swift so that's what right. i made for my my demo uh-huh i see i see yeah yes yeah, swift can consume objective c is my understanding and and kotlin can easily consume java for legacy reasons but but not the other way around is is my understanding. I see. And okay, similar so this story is, at this my is company as notes. well. We're like strictly Swift and, and Kotlin, um, not Objective C or Java. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is these are great notes. And I was I wasn't really aware of this. Uh so so thank you guys for uh bringing this up and clarifying. I also okay. would like just to share my experience. After that, unfortunately, I have to leave um, because I just finished the edX uh, course, uh, becoming an hyperledger developer. So I just finished it uh, last month, and it gave it gave me all the keys to start with VCX. But uh, I totally agree with you that it would be really cool if if we have to, if we can just add some uh, yeah, let's say some uh, some chapter in the in the edX course for uh, for uh, for Unify. And also what I missed to start working with V6 is really a, 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 an up-to-date uh, demo application for iOS and Android. So definitely I will support you if you if you want to, to do that. 
Mm, awesome. Thank you. I I, I think uh, we yeah, I think we wouldn't do that for Libby CX anymore, but I can understand that uh, speaking from your experience starting a Libby CX, uh, that's uh, probably you could easily I can e e imagine you easily miss that. And there are some third party made demos, but they are fairly old, I guess at this point at least two years old and things has changed since then. Uh, but yeah, we should uh, we should take uh, like uh, maybe we should try to take like friendlier approach uh, with the Unify, the new the the new new way, and make sure that there's a demo and, and that kind of stuff to to make it make it easy. Um, yeah, so I guess I I can definitely work on the Android uh, demo um, and sort of have a demo that can walk through a connection protocol. Um, if if that's what we're after, yeah. Well, it it, it seems that that would be uh, having at least something working would be like definitely nice. But I, we can start without that. You know, I guess we we can just prepare the sort of getting started page, right? And um, uh, point out to like two different, you know, one one separate getting started for every VCX and one for the Unify, some sort of readmes. Uh, and then just kind of update them on the fly, right? As, as we further, uh, as we progress further, we can keep these things uh, updated. Mm, yep, yep, good point. Uh, thank you, Rafael. Thanks you for joining us. Uh, Rafael already disconnected. Well, uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, and anything else to 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 this? All right, so seems like that's it. Um, so thank you everyone uh, for joining uh, joining today. It was uh, it was a great meeting. We had uh, one of the highest attendance um, in a while. Um, yeah, and I'll be happy to to see you and Rafa as well on the next next week's call again again uh, Thursday nine a.m. UTC. Uh, we're looking forward. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, have a great rest of the week and nice weekend. You too. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.